In the last episode of Round Sailing, we sailed directly from Grenada to St. Lucia, where we made some stops before going to Martinique. In Le Marine, my friend Jenny joined us, and we headed out to St. Anne. Our dinghy Shabby is like a car for us. We use them every day to go ashore and to transport things between land and run. In most anchorages here in the Caribbean, there's a dinghy dock where you can tie up your dinghy while being on land. We're in Saint Anne, Martinique. Ron is anchored out there. Yeah, it's a small, little, cozy town with a church. You find Saint Anne just outside La Marine, and in contrast to the busy town, Saint Anne is a calm and pretty little village. The most popular beach is the Club Med, but if you want a beach for yourself, take the dinghy and head a bit south. How nice is this place? It's a really lovely anchorage outside Saint Anne. And we're a bit south of Saint Anne now on a really nice beach here where there's a little less people than on the main beach over there. But it's really crowded. Over here we're almost alone. So that's nice. And I think it's because you can almost, I mean, you can get there by car, but it's a lot easier with the. Sometimes when we move a short distance with Ron and there's very little wind, we go by motor instead of sailing. This way we charge the batteries so they will last longer and we can wait a couple of days more before running the engine while staying at anchor. This is Diamond Rock over there. It's a bird uh, natural park. We're heading into Grand Anse, or Grand Anse, in Martinique. Oh, of course. 
Ja. Ja, och djupt är det. Okej. Okay. Vi släpper ankat där emellan någonstans. Normally we dive to check that the anchor has got a good grip. And this time we found out that we got our own security guard. How are you, Yuan? I'm still angry. <sighs> I've been trying to rent a car for over an hour. Finally, they just found, found a car. They told us there were no reservation, but uh, yeah, it was just a struggle for over an hour. We tried to forget about the bad experience and drove to the rainforest. The northern part of Martinique offers a lot of tropical forest and hiking trails. In the jungle! <laughs> yeah, yeah. Really cool. Have you seen Tarzan? <laughs> no. Oh, you are Only Tarzan! <laughs> <laughs> do some more running <laughs> that's for sure we're heading up there the top of Montpil what's the name Montpellier Montpellier it's actually a volcano that in 19 1902 killed uh, almost 30,000 people here on the island so there were some pyroclastic flows coming down the slopes here to the big city of Saint Pierre that was the capital of the island back then so everyone in the capital died, except for one guy who luckily was in prison that day. So the thick walls in the prison protected him from these hot gases and uh, yeah, and ash coming down from the mountain. And uh, everybody else died. Really. So, but right now this volcano is how do you say dormant? It's still active, but I don't know, sleeping or something. So I hope it won't have an eruption today. <laughs> Uh, 
Where are we? <laughs> Sorry. Where are we? Montan Pele, the highest mountain on the island. 1,004, almost 1,400 meters high. <laughs> I'm a bit out of breath because our we're not that uh, we're not that fit any longer. <laughs> How's the toe? It's okay. <laughs> yeah. Slow, it goes slow. I guess it's a bit harder with that, huh? Yeah, it hurts a little bit. We didn't make it all the way up because it was pretty late and my foot was still hurting. Saint Pierre was, as Yuan said, the capital before the eruption 1902. There are still many remnants left from the eruption, but nowadays it's a cozy town which also offers a nice anchorage. But beware because the bay is full of wrecks since all the boats sank during the eruption. Over there is Montan Palais, and that's where the pyroclastic flow came from and just destroyed the whole city. A cloud of superheated volcanic gas and dust rolled out of the volcano at hundreds of miles per hour, destroying everything in an eight mile radius. Yeah, so down here is the prison cell where this guy, Louis, was sitting when this pyroclastic flow was coming down from the volcano. And the entrance to his cell was facing southwest, away from the pyroclastic flow. So the hot gases couldn't get into his cell. So that's uh, how he survived. And he was yeah, the only guy in the whole city of 30,000 people who survived the, the eruption. So quite lucky. This is the guy who survived. The night before the eruption, Luis was arrested for fighting and thrown in a prison cell. He was found four days after the eruption by a rescue team who heard his calls. Despite being in the safest place in the town, he was horribly burned as the air in his room had flash heated to over 1000 degrees Celsius. And there are some signs and marks, but I'm pretty sure that this is not done by him. So you think it's uh, nail scratches? For him trying to get out. <laughs> and the walls, yep. On our way back, we drove along the west coast and left the rainforest and the volcano behind us and entered the big city of Fort de France.
Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to follow the show. And check out our Facebook page and Instagram for up-to-date posts.